Why make Ant-Man 3? Look, I love Ant-Man, particularly played by Paul Rudd. I love Evangeline Lilly as the Wasp as well. But Hollywood's got to ask these questions, both business-wise and creative-wise. I wish Peyton Reed would ask himself these questions. Uh, as you'll see, this conversation we're about to have would be very helpful to the third film. All right, so anyway... Ant-Man 3, why make it? Legit question, especially when you consider that Ant-Man 1 and 2 are two of the lowest grossing movies in the MCU, which means that things didn't improve with the sequel, even though Ant-Man and the Wasp came right after Infinity War and helped to set up Endgame. People didn't care. They said, I'll just read about it online or just skip right to Endgame. They, a lot of people chose you know, they made the choice, and that's very important, not to see Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's bad, especially because Paul Rudd's so lovable, but his box office numbers have never been strong. Anyway, and Evangeline Lilly doesn't really make any other movies. But anyway, you know what usually levels a character's movies up in the MCU? A director change. But no, Kevin Feige just signed Peyton Reed to return for round three making Reed the only director in the MCU because John Watts is MCU adjacent to make a complete solo trilogy. But you know what? That, that might be nice for Reed and his management team, but we're not in the Peyton Reed business and neither is Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige is in the MCU business and I don't think Peyton Reed is a good choice here. But as many of you have pointed out, at least this means that Reed won't direct the Fantastic Four movie that he's been angling to direct. Or won't he? Because Reed is friends with James Gunn, inexplicably got this gig, this, you know, third, he's got, he's getting a, a round three, even though he's had, he's failed twice now. Uh, the Fantastic Four movie is clearly a ways off, so he could always do it after another Ant-Man movie. And his name is Reed. I wonder if Peyton has used that. He's like, I'll use anything to get Fantastic Four. Please don't give it to him. But anyway, back to Ant-Man 3, there's getting to be quite the waiting list for release dates in the MCU. So why give what's becoming quickly a coveted spot, a coveted rare spot, to a set of movies that are clearly operating at a smaller level? Hmm? Uh, as I said, it's a legit question, but here are some legit answers. All right, so number one. Paul Rudd crushed it in Endgame. He was hilarious. He punched a Leviathan in the face. He was Marvel movie magic. One of the best characters in that movie. And he stole a lot of his scenes in uh, Civil War, right? I mean, he really does a great job when he's in any movie that Peyton Reed isn't directing. I'm just saying. All right, so as you can see, I'm not saying they shouldn't make another Ant-Man movie. I'm just saying they shouldn't make one with Peyton Reed. But you know what? Maybe Reed will finally get it, right? Because his Ant-Man movies have been surprisingly low on action sequences, despite having two characters with amazing powers that really suit themselves to not only action sequences, but unique ones. Now, Ant-Man and the Wasp, as I'm sure some of you are already typing, did have some cool action sequences, but not only were they short, but pretty much all of them, I think all of them actually were, teased and for the most part, fully shown in the trailers. So when you got to the multiplex, you were like, so there is nothing else. What? All right, so number two, reason number two. So yeah, but still, Paul Rudd, I wanna see more of him as Ant-Man and I wanna see more of Angeline Lilly as the Wasp. But no, uh, answer number two, theme parks. Because Ant-Man is such a cool character, of course he and the Wasp are popping up in the theme parks. Disney has a diverse portfolio. Uh, Hong Kong's uh, Disneyland's Buzz Lightyear ride got an uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp makeover just this year, featuring Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly. Oh, I want to ride that so bad. It looks amazing. I do love Buzz Lightyear as a ride, so I don't love it when they reskin rides, like they reskinned uh, Tower of Terror for Guardians of the Galaxy. Love Tower of Terror, but do love Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, the new version of the ride. So, I don't know, is it time for Buzz Lightyear, Lightyear to go the way of Ant-Man and the Wasp? Uh, have any of you ridden it, by the way? It looks like an amazing ride. And I love the Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly filmed uh, stuff for the attraction. You know, just shows how awesome they are. And they deserve better movies! All right, so, plus, there's the Pym Test Kitchen coming to Avengers Campus in 2020. These attractions need a movie to back them up. Who wants to ride the ride or eat at the restaurant of the duo that's third movie got canceled? Less people that want to eat at the one that's going forward. Uh, although, I, I'm, yeah, I just would put a pall over it. I mean, I'm still riding that ride and eating at that restaurant, but it would be less cool. 
Now on that note, number three, it seems everybody gets a trilogy. If you get started, you get a trilogy in the MCU. Or maybe even more, as Thor says, because I think his first two movies didn't really count, particularly that middle one. Uh, Because again, it would be embarrassing for Ant-Man and the Wasp to not complete their own trilogy, which is very good news for Doctor Strange, who also was low gross in compared, he did very well overseas. Um, But Doctor Strange, and of course, Black Panther and Captain Marvel to complete their trilogies. Black Widow though, being dead, is a bit of a question mark. And one has to wonder if Florence Pugh uh, will inherit ScarJo's second two movies. I'd be down for that. Uh, Then recent, uh, answer number four, Disney Plus. I put a question mark here because some of you guessed when I was tweeting about this on Friday that a third Ant-Man movie, because of their smaller scale, both creatively and at the box office, would maybe be a better fit at Disney Plus, which of course Disney is very aggressively you know, populating with not just content, but Marvel content. But while this, while this does seem like a good fit to me, and I wouldn't rule it out, again, I think the demotion would be bad for the theme parks and the MCU brand overall. And Ant-Man is such a valuable character in the uh, in the, the team-up movies, uh, I don't think they'd want to, to do that to him. I think that the second-tier characters who will never get a movie, like, you know, although, you know, Wanda's leveling up to uh, the Doctor Strange sequel, but still, she's never gonna get her own set of movies, right? Sorry, Wanda fans, but she's getting, it looks like an amazing TV series. But I think that's the distinction. So I don't know if Disney Plus actually would work out. Then five, another Avenger. Because not every Avenger does have their own set of movies. And Thor Ragnarok proved the team-ups are a very good idea. Uh, Doctor Strange is casting a team-up spell for his own sequel with Wanda. And there are a lot, and I think he's going to have a ton of Avengers in that. It'll be, basically be like another Civil War where it's a de facto Avengers movie. But anyway, there are a lot of characters who could show up in an Ant- another Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. First and foremost, Professor Hulk, who's now done some, some work in their field. I think that would be fantastic. And of course, while Hulk could be showing up in the She-Hulk show, uh, he's fabulous in the movies. He can't have his own movie because of that Universal deal still in place. That they get to release any Hulk move, solo Hulk movies themselves. So I think he'd be great in an Ant Man and Wasp movie. And they could certainly use the assist. Ant Man, uh, Giant Man, you know, Ant Man, Giant Man, and Hulk's fighting side by side. I'd love it. All right, fine. And I think th- oh, there's just a lot of good stuff there. Finally, uh, answer number six, legit answer number six is Secret Invasion. As I've pointed out before in my Secret Invasion coverage, in the comics, both Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne were a big part of that story. Hank was replaced by a Skrull uh, as a sleeper agent and went undiscovered for quite some time. He did a lot of damage, and some of that was turning Janet Van Dyne into a living bomb who detonated when the Skrulls needed her to at a pivotal point in the battle. It's a big part of Janet Van Dyne's comic book history, in fact. And Hank. I don't know if it'll happen to Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer. I don't know if they'll, uh, you know, play around the storyline and have it happen to uh, Scott and Hope. We'll see. Because, uh, you know, it is rumored that Secret Invasion could be uh, the Captain, the second Captain Marvel movie, although we all want an A-Force movie. Damn it! Maybe that'll be Captain Marvel 3, but she's so far away. I don't, I don't think Secret Invasion should involve an all-female team. But anyway, a third Ant-Man and the Wasp movie could help set up Secret Invasion no matter where it takes place. I still think Secret Invasion, you know, because I think they re- I think they want Captain Marvel 2 to be an A-Force movie, quite frankly. Brie Larson herself is so, so pushing for that. I think Secret Invasion should be the next Avengers movie. Avengers, Secret Invasion. It'll be amazing. I love it! So, and again, Ant-Man and the Wasp could help set that up, but it's pretty far down the line, so we'll be getting time to have an Avengers movie at that point as well. So, I hope, will you see Ant-Man and the Wasp 3 if it sets up Secret Invasion, or will you just be like, I'll catch up? All right, so, because, you know, again, I guess it only really set up... um, uh, end game and the end credit sequence. Maybe they have to make that the whole movie. All right, so those are the legit reasons to make Ant-Man 3, but I still have very little faith in Peyton Reed, but fingers crossed because these re- reasons are all so good. So I really think they should make Ant-Man 3, but it just boggles the mind that they would uh, re-up Peyton Reed. I just, I, I mean, he had two chances. I mean, it's not like, oh, he had to learn, you know, like Brian Singer, the difference between X, X-Men and X2, right? Uh, Christopher Nolan, the difference between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. But Peyton's had his two movies, and he didn't level up at all. All right, so share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And, of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now. 